Hello, everyone. Worship at Ad Hoc's Altar. All right. Building with anything. Why do you think it's so important for people to build altars after meeting God, huh? Do you think it mattered to God what materials were used to build altars? Why, why not? Today's Bible lesson includes four short passages. Each these of these passages have something in common. As you read these, as I read these scriptures, maybe you can figure out what the common commonalities are, okay? First scripture is Genesis 8, 20, 21, 12, 6 to 8, 28, 16 through 22. Noah built an altar to the, to the Lord. He took some of the clean large animals and some of the clean birds and placed entirely burned offerings on the altar. The Lord smelled the, ple the pleasing scent and the Lord thought to himself, I will not curse the fertile land anymore because of human beings since the ideas of the human mind are evil from their youth i will never again destroy every living thing as i have done genesis 12 6 to 8 abraham delivered through the land as far as the sacred place at sechem at the oak of morah the canaanites lived in the land at that time the lord appeared to abraham and said I give this land to your descendants. So Abraham built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. From there, he traveled toward the mountains east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and worshiped in the Lord's name. Genesis 28, 16 to 22. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought to himself, the Lord is definitely in his place, but I didn't know it. He was terrified and thought, this sacred place is awesome. It's none other than God's house in the entrance to heaven. After Jacob got up early in the morning, he took the stone that he had put near his head, set it up in a sacred pillar and poured oil on top of it. He named that sacred place Bethel, though Luz was the city's original name. Jacob made a solemn promise. If God is with me and protects me in this trip, I'm taking and in this trip I'm taking and gives me bread to eat and clothes to wear, and I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. This stone that I've set up as a sacred pillar will be God's house, and of everything you give me, I will give a tenth back. Samuel 7, 10 through 11, I mean 12. While Samuel was offering the entire, entirely burned offering, the Philistines advanced to attack Israel. But the Lord thundered against the Philistines with a great blast on that every day, throwing the Philistines into such a panic that they were defeated by Israel. The Israelite soldiers came out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines. They struck them down until they reached the place just below Beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shezhanah. He named it Ebenezer, explaining the Lord helped us to this very point. In the Old Testament, people built altars when they encountered God in an unexpected places. They had to build these altars out of whatever materials they had to do they could find nearby. So what do these scriptures have in common? You're right, altars. Why do you think that people in these stories built an altar, huh? What do these altars represent? In the Old Testament, it was common for people to build altars as a way to celebrate God or to commemorate a time that they have connected with God. Altars were also a type of monument for future generations. Even though we worship together with others in the same church or around the same altar, each of us experiences our connections to God in a different and a personal way. What does it mean to you to be sacred? When was the first, when you hear the word sacred, what two things come to mind to you? Are there sacred things in your relationship with God? Sacred moments, sacred places. The word paramount comes from the law, the Latin word paramentum, which means to adorn or prepare. Paraments are used to decorate worship furnitures, including the altar, the pulpit, and lectern. 
The pulpit and lectern are the places from which the message is delivered and the scripture is read. That's what we see our pastor JB when he does his scripture reading. And United States and the United Methodist Church, as well as many others, colors are changed based on seasons of the year in the church. Lent and Advent are purple or blue. Christmas and Easter are white. Pentecost is red and, ordina and ordinary days. The time between Pentecost Sunday and the first Sunday at Advent are green. A cairn is an ad hoc altar of sorts, a stack of stones built as a memorial or landmark. It is often left along a hiking trail for people to add and to indicate turns of the path. Cairns have existed throughout history. The name comes from the Scottish Gaelic word cam. Now, maybe you guys can take a stones. We have some stones here. I'd like to show you. There's one. Can you see that? Yeah, back up a little bit. This one has hearts on it that we painted. It's a pretty big stone here. Maybe if I just show it like that. Can you see that? There's a stone. And here's another one. This is what my daughter did. She made it a huge stone. I guess you know what that is. That is a tree that she made in the back of it. You colored the back of it. It's a pretty big stone. What do you think? It's pretty nice, huh? Maybe you guys can find a stone. You can draw a picture like this or write blessing on each of one of them and stack them on top of each other and put it around your home and the back or out in your, your yard, your garden as makeshift altars to say thanks. A moment thanking, uh, um, and a, okay, then maybe you can put a brief prayer in your mind. You can write it down. Um, to say thanks for your blessings. Now we can say thank you to our Lord in a prayer. Lord, we are grateful for your presence and we thank you for the opportunity to worship you both together as a church and in our families and you in our lives forever. Amen. 